-hmm. Just imagine you taking off your hat and 50 people in this room instantly. It was just like that in that parking lot. It was like they was jumping out of everything, out of cars. It, I mean, it was like they was coming from under, underground. They was coming out of hotel rooms. It was crazy. When I was in the streets moving dope, mm -hmm. I had this sense of it's honor amongst thieves. And it wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, they did business honorable. But everybody else wasn't like that. They was like, yo, I'm just getting in how I get it. You know, you people try to rob you in a fair exchange. They're like, man, we, we both doing, we both doing something that's illegal. Now you want to bring an element in that you're going to try to rob me. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't the type of person that you could just rob mm -hmm. or you could threaten. Like if you threaten me, you got to prove that. Like you, you got to prove that. But I don't think that you, that people, they know, they knew eventually, but back then they didn't know, understand the extent of how I actually was, you know, because my uncles were some gangsters too. So it's like, it's a lot of broad daylight. Let me make an example of why you shouldn't do it. You know, my uncle Mac was ruthless. My uncle Alfred was ruthless. Yeah. You know, so it was like, you, um, I, I remember all four of us was in prison at the same time. And my grandmother was like an enabler. And I used to see it. But my uncle been to jail like prison, prison like nine times. And she would always, he ain't do nothing. I'm like, yo, man, he did something, man. And I wouldn't let her come visit me. I wouldn't let my mom, my mom mm -hmm. came and visit me one time mm -hmm. in the six years that I was there. Because I didn't want, I didn't really want that stigma of you seeing your son behind bars. Sure. And my pop was so gangster when we was all in prison, he would send money from his account to to all of our accounts. I'm like, just still keeping that, hey, I'm the I'm the I'm the head. Mm -hmm. So it was you still getting these things of being these examples from him, you know. Yeah. So I play chess, I think things out. I dress a certain way. Um, I never want to work for anybody, and and I'm still the head of my my crew, my my family. You know, I'm still the the head figure. But on the other end, I try to be empathetic and sympathetic and compassionate mm -hmm. and and tender. You know, for my kid for my kids, and you know, you want to be tender towards your lady. You want to be compassionate towards society mm -hmm. from my mom but then you got this this really ruthless mean streak in you when people decide oh i'm gonna take his kindness for weakness yeah they and, say that a lot um the silent ones you know the people that don't tend to with the theatrics are the ones that you be leery of the, the loud ones that, that you know and i think i was i was i was a uh, like a really scary kid at one point mm -hmm. and it wasn't from I'm scared to do something I'm scared of how far I was gonna go yeah and my mother was like yo man if like people would tell my mother oh I got into it with your son and she was like will y'all argue he's like yeah oh you wouldn't get into him he was he was having fun the problem is when he go silent this is when you got a problem with him. When he stopped talking, that's when the problem, that's when the problem comes. Mm -hmm. And being, before, before prison, I was a jovial cat, you know, I just hooked, I think I hooked up with some wrong people, man. Just trying not to be around, um, around my, my, my mom, mm -hmm. you know, in a situation, you know, you, your man, you and she dated. Then she broke up with that dude and dated a great dude, man. Um, named Ron. He, you know, he was a good, he was a good yeah. cat. You know, silent cat. As far as um the prison sentence, so what went what what went down? And were you surprised or did you? I was I was um not surprised. I was more surprised that that somebody who had been down with for so long didn't listen to me. 
I was running with this dude named Charles, and I and me and Charles met on in a very odd way because mm -hmm. um, I was living in this area called um, Bra Forest, mm -hmm. and it was these apartments that nobody would sell in, and I didn't know why, but people kept talking about it. Oh, the feds over there, they, the feds watching those apartments. And I'll never forget this dude, this gay dude, um, they called him Tinkerbell. He had one of these like these wet, drippy curls. Like it wasn't it wasn't curled, it was just wet. And this is the first person I ever saw. Remember the, you know them them track shorts that Carl Lewis used to wear? They come real high. Yeah, they come right with the slit on the side. He had them on and some leg warmers, some purple leg warmers. <laughs> I never forget it. And he was like, yo man, I'm tired of walking over here to buy my dope. Somebody gotta come over there. And I heard him talking to this guy named Ronell. Mm -hmm. And I ran around the parking lot, and I'm 14 at the time, and I'm like, yo, where y'all at? And he's like, we over there, we over there. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of people over there. They just don't want to come over here. So I started going over there, and I'm moving, I'm moving fast. Like, I started with a 50-pack, and all of a sudden, I'm up to two ounces, and Ronell would tell Charles, because he worked for Charles, it was his brother-in-law. He told my name, he's like, yo, man, this is this young cat that's buying a lot from us. So everybody used to hang out at the park. And so I came to the park to buy something from Ronell. And Ronell, Charles was there. He was like, yo, this this the young boy right here. And Charles um, told me I was going to work for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to ignore him, because I've heard about him. He a big dude, he's like 6'4". He, he had one of them chests that came out to here. Tookie Williams' chest, I call it. Okay, okay. Big dude, and I don't want to talk to him. He, he Big John and all these other cats out there, and I'm like, yo, Ronnie, I just came to get what I need to get. And he's talking to me, and I'm really ignoring him, like, yo, and he's like, young boy, you heard what I said? I said, Ronnie, I'm just here to get what I can to get. And Ronnell was like, yo, man, he talking to you. I said, man, what, what's happening? He said, man, I hear you moving a lot of stuff for us, man. I said, I'm really not moving for y'all. I'm buying it and doing my, he said, man, I want you to work for me. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm cool on that. Cause it's my dad's mentality. I'm not working for nobody. And he pulls out a, a, I didn't know what it was at the time. I found out later that it was a Desert Eagle. Cause I just knew it was a big gun. Okay. And he put it in my face. He said, no, you gonna work for me. And I never thought that I was this type of person. This man had a gun in my face. And two weeks prior, I was selling to this dude in his house. Because every dope fiend got a white girl on the line for some reason. He's like, I got this white girl. You know, you come. So I'm at their house, mm -hmm. and he he's smoking. I'm just selling to him as he's smoking. And he blew crack smoke in my face. Mm. And I got mad. And I'm like, yo, man, you trying to get me addicted? We started fighting in the house. And his gun fell out. He had a 25 automatic. Mm -hmm. And I picked his gun up. And I didn't even know how to hold no gun. I didn't have my finger on the trigger. I had my finger on the outside with, a, with a, the rim of the trigger. I'm like, yo, and I'm like, I took his gun, I'm out. So when this happened, I still had that 25. Mm. And Charles put his gun on me in my face. And then I pulled my 25 out. I'm like, nah, bro, I ain't, I ain't working for you. And for some reason, this excited him. He was like, yo, man. This little nigga got heart, man, and snatched my gun out of my hand. And I'm just, I'm just standing with my hand still up. I'm like, this nigga got my gun. He gave, gave it back to me. Like, yo, yeah. little nigga, you got heart, man. If you got any problems around here, man, you call me. So by the time I was 15, me and Charles were working together. Because Ronnell had got into it with some dudes. Mm -hmm. And I had fired a couple of shots on him because, you know, I'm cool with Ronell. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, man, this little dude here is sick with it. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just trying to make sure my supply stay good and I'm out the way and I'm not working for them. I'm not under nobody's umbrella. So I start working with Charles as a partnership. Like, 
I'm his little basically run up. He distributor? Yeah. yeah. So I'm handling everything else and we splitting profit. It's not like I'm working for him now. And so since I was 15, so now four days of my birthday, we we finna drop some drop some weight to somebody. And I've been through, me and him have been through this a lot, man. I'm like, and I don't know why he wasn't listening to me. It was confusing mm -hmm. that this dude named Mo, that he wasn't his boy, wasn't my boy. It was, Mo was his boy that he, that he recruited. And Mo was just like, he kind of money hungry. And I was kind of cool. Like, I got bread. I'm driving a BMW. I got another car. I got a, I got a house. I got a condo over here. I'm... I'm cool, man. I, I'm not trying to be a drug kingpin. I'm trying to go to school and have my bread and be comfortable. We go to this spot, man, the La Quinta Inn, and we walk in the room, and we got a certain codes that we used to do to let people that tip each other off, hey, man, this ain't a good move. So I'm in there I'm counting this money. We dropping five kilos of these dudes from out of town. They're supposed to be from New Orleans. Mm. And I'm counting the money. And I see these numbers on the money. Numbers are in red and blue. And I see the numbers. And then I know things. And I had been selling dope long enough to know that nobody, if you dropping, you dropping money and you dropping all this dope, nobody comes to a dope deal with hundreds and 50s hmm. just never dope money don't come like that you know what I'm saying? it never comes like that so i'm like yo man you got all hundreds and fifties and this is me i'm like i ain't got no 20s so i, I said and i asked the man i said yo what's these numbers on the on the money he said oh that, that's the um the numbers from the bank the franklin bank in new orleans <laughs> but franklin street is the street 1301 Franklin is the jail in Houston. Hmm. And it's a notorious jail. It's, it's, a, it's a block called 10B3. 10B3 was, was so notorious it was known in the street. Like people were like, yo, he came off 10B3. Hmm. It's the, the whole floor, the whole 10th floor is called the gladiator floor. So I tap on the table three times, which is our sign, man, it's the police. So I put the money down, I ain't take no money out. And I walk outside, I'm like, yo, Mo, tell um, Charles to don't come to this parking lot with, the, with that dope. Because this is the feds, man. It's the police. Mm. I'm backing the Astro van up so we can just pull out. The next thing I know, I see Charles pulling into the parking lot. And he too far away for me to get to him. And, but the whole time, the ride there, I kept telling Mo, I said, man, I don't feel good about this. Oh, man, you just nervous. And I've, I'm leery. I'm always been leery of everything. So we get there, and it's noon. Mm -hmm. It's noon. And I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not saying I'm the smartest person, but I do recognize surroundings. Mm -hmm. It's noon. What happens at noon? in any hotel people checking out yeah i say mo why ain't nobody checking out this hotel i don't even see no cleaning lady coming back and forth i say man i said man this is his out mo tells charles once i find out once we get busted we all got had to get a rain together and we in this is our first time in the hotel and i find out what mo told charles Mm. Mo told Charles that I, hey man, I, I think your boy nervous, man, and I don't know why Charles listening to him. You've been, you've been knowing me since I. When, when have you ever known me to be nervous? Cautious, never nervous. And he said, man, that's why I came to the parking lot, because Mo made it seem like it wasn't nothing. Man, unna very unnatural move from the undercover dude when the. And it wasn't even the same dudes that was in the room. It mm -hmm. was they. It was a point person 
who they was using. He was a dude that w had got busted two years prior, and he mm. was setting up people wow. to get his sentence reduced. Charles opens the trunk, and all I see from a distance, I see as soon as the trunk come up, the dude had on a hat, and he took his hat off like, whew, like look at all this dope. Don't know dude who moving dope do that. And man, if I tell you, it's like, like this room, it's, it's us in this room right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just imagine you taking off your hat and 50 people in this room instantly. It was just like that in that parking lot. It was like they was jumping out of everything, out of cars. It, I mean, it was like they was coming from under, underground. They was coming out of hotel rooms. It was crazy. Man, so they must have been kind of keeping an eye on y'all for some time? They was trying to bust this other dude mm. that he trying to bust this other dude named um, Kevin. He was trying to bust Kevin, and they had Kevin's club under um, surveillance. Okay. They had the phone tap. Because we was at his club like two nights before. Mm -hmm. And they had my conversation with my girlfriend on the, in the evidence. You know, and I was saying, yo, we over here at this spot. It was, they had the whole thing on it. Uh, um, Pam Ross. And they had the whole conversation with me and Pam on the phone. And they was trying to get him. They just got us. Like the man told me, man, y'all just icing on the cake. We we know we know everything about y'all too, and it, it, Charles just got sloppy. He yeah. just got a little sloppy, and that's how we end up getting busted. And so you end up uh, that was uh, the one prison sentence that you did. One prison sentence, 15, 15 years. You but was I, in prison for fifteen. No, I was in prison for six. I got a fifteen year sentence. Okay. And then with being on parole in the streets is like being in prison too.